So I've been watching Jim Carrey and his public meltdown. If you've not seen any of the interviews that he's been giving, uh, it is, it's both very sad, uh, but at the same time, it's justified. See, what Jim Carrey did, for most of you who don't know, is he sold his soul many years ago, in the 90s, I'm predicting. When he blew up, Dumb and Dumber, The Mask, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, you remember those movies, hysterical. But he sold his soul, and he came firing right out of the gate with blockbuster after blockbuster after blockbuster. And that's part of the deal. We'll take a look at a modern day example in a couple of minutes here. But look at Jim now. He's old. Phone's not ringing. He's not in such high demand. And he's breaking down mentally because he knows that he has but a short time. In his mind, I think what he's trying to do is figure out a way out of his contract. Unfortunately, as you see, and as you will see, it's the wrong way. See, what Hollywood stars like Jim Carrey do not understand, and quite frankly, I think they refuse to understand, and it goes basically for every human that's lived on this earth, is there is only one way to salvation, and that's through Jesus Christ. Now, these narcissists, which easily sign on the dotted line, what they're forced to do, first of all, is to do what they're told. See, when you come to Satan and sell your soul, Satan is not going to say, well, let's, let's see what you got, Jim. Let's see your... No, you're given scripts. You're told what to say. Whatever talent you bring to it, sure, you can use. And a lot of people thought he was funny because he was a funny guy. But it was all for naught. Because in the end, he participated in the shredding and tearing down and the destruction of mankind. Having to do what he's told, he participates in the tearing down of men and women across generations. And it's all for nothing because in the end, you get no satisfaction. He won't be remembered, just like many of the previous who came before him are already forgotten. You know, it wasn't too long ago, and of course you can read about this story online, it wasn't too long ago when Paul McCartney and Kanye West did a song together. Maybe some of you have heard it, maybe some of you haven't. But after the single was released, a Twitter storm erupted, literally. And the tweets, many of them went like this. Yo, man, I don't know who this old guy is, but Kanye West just done made him famous. See, in one generation removed since the Beatles, they were already forgetting who this guy was. One of the Beatles, Paul McCartney. Do the research. You'll see that this actually happened. Now, when Paul McCartney and John Lennon made their deals with the devil, I'm sure they were told that you'll be rock gods for all eternity. And it hasn't even been one generation later that mankind is already forgetting who Paul McCartney is and was. It's quite astonishing. And this is kind of what's happening to Jim Carrey. He realizes that he got the short end of the deal. And in a desperate attempt to justify things, he's on a search right now to undo what was done when he sold his soul. But again, the saddest thing is that he'll try everything else other than coming to the love of Jesus Christ. So you're seeing this public meltdown, which again is going to get worse and worse and worse. And probably something very public and sad is going to be the final result of Jim Carrey. You gotta ask yourself, have you seen this before? And the answer is sort of. Now, of course, we all recognize this person. This is Elvis Presley. Thank you very much. Of course, you're looking at one of his many gospel albums that he did. Now, there's no doubt that this was a public example of somebody who did indeed sell their soul, who was thrust into the limelight. Riches and women, drugs, had it all. And later on in the 60s, he started to 
realized that he got the short end of the deal. And maybe if he sang a couple of gospel albums, uh, he could be forgiven for what he did. Not actually coming to the love and the forgiveness of Jesus Christ, he wanted to just sing some gospel albums, maybe thinking that he could undo what it was that he did. But it was kind of sad watching it all unravel. Later on in the 70s, he died choking on his own vomit in a bathtub, um, clearly never having come to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And make no mistake, people who sell their souls are the biggest narcissists on the face of the earth. Because again, it's not just bad enough that they sold their souls, but when they sell their souls, they're forced to participate in the destruction of mankind. While they're given lyrics to sing, they're given acts to perform, and it tears, uh, tears down the, what's left of morals and values and anything resembling godliness in this world. They participate in the destruction of mankind. This is the saddest part. This makes them the worst men and women on the face of the earth. They're selling out their brothers and sisters for a season of fame. For what? It's terrible. Now you're looking at Bob Dylan. <laughs> One of the worst singers in the history of rock and roll. But evidence that Satan indeed does exist. For who else but Satan could move the masses to actually categorize this guy as a great rock and roll icon? Having the worst voice in the history of rock and roll and not particularly talented at all. But that's part of the deal. When you sell your soul to Satan, you're given the lyrics to sing. Of course, they weren't his own. Satan gave Bob Dylan lyrics and made him a musical icon, a, a rock legend. Because of the help of the spiritual wickedness in the kingdom of Satan, he was thrust into the spotlight in the early 60s and given legendary status, even unto this day, even after confessing that he sold his soul on the news program, 60 Minutes. Another example of somebody who thought that simply by doing some gospel albums that he could undo what it was that he did. It doesn't work like that. As promised, here's an example of somebody who sold their soul. In the modern era, Jennifer Lawrence, a couple of years ago, being thrust onto the spotlight with the uh, movie franchise, The Hunger Games. You know, the neat little plots about teenagers killing other teenagers in order to survive. It's all just fun, right? Only time will tell here. But again thinking she'll somehow live forever and be remembered as a legend, she won't. They all do, though, don't they? And time takes over, and she'll start to age, and she'll realize that she got the short end of the deal. But until then, she'll participate in other franchises like X-Men, you know, where superhuman mutants come to power. Just a cover for actual fallen angels who will eventually show up on earth. It's all conditioning. It's all part of the deal. But make no mistake, she did not rise to fame on her own talents. And quite frankly, nobody can. Nobody can achieve this level of fame in Satan's world without selling their souls. So again, pig, because she didn't just sell her soul to get fame and fortune. She actually has to participate in the tearing down of all godliness in this world. That's what makes her a pig. Now we can read in Mark chapter 8, verse 36, For what shall the profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Clearly the wisdom of the Bible tells us that there is nothing that's worth losing your soul. Our God, in the name of Jesus Christ, is everything. It's very astonishing and sad to see these things happening in this world. It's so obvious too. You see icons, I guess they're modern day icons like P. Diddy and Jay-Z. You know they're worth billions, yet I can't name one song that either one of these guys have ever done. It's astonishing. Look at somebody like Beyonce. You know she sold her soul 
Again, I mean, she rose to fame through Destiny's Child, and then later on, almost exclusively by stripping down, twerking, and sexualizing her entire career, she has risen to legendary status. And is that talent? Well, here's the thing. Nobody cares. You have, I've literally met people in their 60s and 70s who think that Beyonce is wonderful. Church-going people at that. That's how much the power of the music industry has over people. When you have church ladies thinking that Beyonce is a legend. Beyonce may have talked about God in one of her interviews, and that was enough for them. She is on the high and moral ground, having no clue that Satan has just succeeded in mass deception. It's astonishing. There is no doubt, just on a side note, Beyonce is MK Ultra. You may very well see an entire meltdown coming up here in the future on her, too. You've sort of seen it happening already. Keep your eye on her. Now, it shouldn't surprise you that these things are happening. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, let's read this together. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Look at this right here. Isn't that true? Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness. Now, here's where the Beyonce part comes in. Having a form of godliness, you know, saying, for example, when a celebrity says, oh, I wouldn't be anywhere today if it wasn't for my faith. It's a very, you know, a broad definition of, you know, who's their faith through. But all of a sudden, that's good enough for even church-going people. Oh, that's all I need. This person loves God. No, they don't. It's called having a form of godliness. But here, denying the power thereof from such turn away. We're seeing that front and center right now. You're also, look at somebody here like Madonna, who's been around for, golly, going on 35 years or so. It's very sad, desperate, desperate, literally at the end of her walk, uh, where she's trying to hold on to fame and fortune. So deceived is she to actually think that by the world standard that she's still desired, uh, but more so making a fool out of herself as you watch Satan continue to spin her. Almost interested, I think, to see where this train wreck will eventually crash permanently. And very sad. An example of somebody whose conscience is seared, uh, being a total lover of herself, more than willing to cause millions of others to go to hell. But yeah, this just happened recently. Uh, there's a pop group called K-pop. Not sure how big K-pop was in the United States. I, I think they were beginning to make some headway. But as far as the rest of the world, they were huge. Uh, there was a member, Shin Yi Yong Hyun, apparently killed himself at the age of 27. And again, I think it's because of uh, not being able to handle fortune and fame. They actually had a song called Lucifer. In fact, the majority of the body of their work was quite satanic. And here it talks about him committing suicide um, at the age of 27. Look at that. Wow. So you got to tell me, if you're 27 years old, you basically have a blank check, all the money you ever desired, women, cars, drugs, basically uh, anything you want at any time. Why would you kill yourself if it wasn't, in fact, spiritual? And there's the answer, of course. It is spiritual. Uh, this guy knows exactly what he did, and he could not handle it. Sold his soul to the devil. You've seen it, of course, with others like Kurt Cobain. Uh, they cannot handle 
Uh, and either way, even if you think, well, no, they can handle it, well, they're, they're of course, thrust into a, a dark spiritual plunge. Uh, they're tormented by spiritual wickedness, by demons, and they cannot handle it. So they think their only solution, at least in people like this, is to kill themselves. So again, I got a little off track there, and I apologize. Um, getting back to Jim Carrey on the long shot that Jim's watching this, or for that matter, any other celebrity. You cannot sell your soul. Your soul is not yours to sell. And for the record, it was Jesus Christ in John 14, 6, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but through me. Jesus Christ is the only way unto salvation. If you want salvation, you can have salvation. Come to Jesus Christ today. That's as simple as that. That goes for anybody listening. Give your life to Jesus Christ and cry out unto him for salvation. Confess with your mouth that he is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave or contact me. If you feel inclined to pray for Jim Carrey, please do. He is a soul created by Jesus Christ. But keep your eye on him. It's, um, again, very, very sad to watch this man unravel publicly. And again, if you feel inclined to pray for him, pray for him. And I pray that he would come to the salvation of Jesus Christ. If not, it goes to the stubbornness and the, the narcissism of a modern-day man who will take his pride with him right under the grave while thinking he can find a solution in anything else. Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings.